Somebody say amen. 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 Brother Darrell, pray for us if you will. Lord, we thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. Yes. We thank you that we could be here together to fellowship in your word. Amen. We're praying. We pray amen. Our congregation, we pray for our service this morning. If we were not pastor, yes. as he brings a message to us, and like us in our minds, yes, Father, Lord. we may take your word and use it for the lifting of your glory, Father, and that as we study the Sunday school this morning, yes. Father, that we might always be willing to uh, do what we need to do to show other people yes, that uh, yes. they can see Christ through our actions That's and our days, right. Lord. We thank you, Father, That's this right. morning. We pray yes. to bless our city. Yes. Yes. Special blessings for them. We bless you, Father, and everything that we're saying do today. We yes. pray to the Lord for all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
There's people dying out here on the street taking fentanyl and meth and everything else looking for what they were seeing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Peace. Amen. Peace, that wonderful peace. Amen. You know how many people don't have any peace? Amen. Amen. Well, sing that again. Y'all listen careful to that way first. It wouldn't hurt you to say amen every once in a while. Amen. Oh, so are you here without comfort and rest? Walking down the road.
sick today, keep them in your prayers, or some is trapped, and uh, uh, well, uh, Nathan's fixing to jump up here, but don't worry, his wife's going with him, and uh, <laughs> who's there else is going with him? Betty's going with him? Are you going to drive him? Oh, she's going to sleep with us. Oh, I'm talking about leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Margie and Nathan. We're going to fly away. Yeah, Margie and Nathan are about to go now. It's your cousin. Her first cousin passed away just a little bit ago, and they're going to take off up towards Spartanburg and, and try yeah. to help there, okay? So keep them in your prayers as they travel today. Oh, Don't forget, men's fellowship breakfast is Saturday at 9 o'clock. You can always come earlier and stand around the frying pan while they cook breakfast and drink coffee and, and tell, tell tall tales like they all do. And, uh, so you come Saturday, if you're a man, bring somebody with you, bring them boys, it don't matter. Uh, Danny said women are welcome to clean up. <laughs> so uh, if you want to come help clean up after the men's practice, that would be wonderful, let me. And uh, so do that. Uh, I, I, we're going to start using two books pretty soon. I bought those old Sir, Soul Stir and Hymn books, but we got two or three different colors there. And we're going to put book covers on them so they all match. But they're not going to fit in that uh, holder like Holroyd likes them like that. We'll have to put them in the way that everywhere else does like that. And so they'll fit side by side. But get ready. We're going to start singing some of those old ones out of that old Amen. Soul Stern hymnal. Hmm. And uh, so we'll get some nice covers on those first. Because if I say right now, get the old Soul Stern hymnals, purple, blue, red or green, but uh, we can uh, get them all one color and get that fixed. Start praying, we're going to get a building uh, committee together and start looking at some stuff hey. and planning, and uh, don't get in no hurry, that's, hey, I've been through that more, it takes two years to build a building, and that's if you fast, <clears throat> and so uh, be praying about that, all right? Probably some announcements I forgot, but that's okay, let's get started, come on. Come on. Let's all stand and take hymn 54, Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness.
Turn this thing. I always say, turn it up. So be beware. John, John, you might want to turn it down. John chapter seven. If you can't hear it, move forward. John chapter seven. John chapter seven. I can't promise you I'm gonna be quiet enough. I did find my announcements. We <laughs> serve the Lord here at the nursery. Everybody wants to serve. I'm going to preach. We'll go to the nursery and preach. They need you in there. Also sign the cleanup list. Whoever's doing it this week, there's a key on the bulletin board on your right-hand side in the hall there. There's a sign-up list. Pick out a date that you can do it. Or sign it down there. That Sunday, you can get your key, clean up, put the key right back there. And if you need any help with that, at least some of you, I don't know, just about anybody can tell you how to do it. Got a list of what to clean and everything right there on the bulletin board. Uh, also, don't forget Saturday visitation every Saturday at 10 a.m. Karen heads it up three three Saturdays a month, and, and uh, then on on, on uh, well four Saturdays a month. Then on the fourth, is, we call it church wide, where we do visitation, Sunday school, whatever needs to be done. But uh, uh, my wife and I had the privilege of going yesterday, and uh, man, we had a good time. It was beautiful weather and. Wonderful people didn't hear one discouraging word or one, one, uh, uh, anything. It was just good. It was good. And uh, uh, I want to thank Taryn and Mark for being so faithful. Taryn's wife went and uh, Elizabeth went and she got sick. And then I think today one of his other kids are sick. So she's at home, but she's watching right now. And I just thank God for faithful people. Amen. And uh, if, you wanna, if you want it to grow, you're going to have to go, okay? Uh, don't nobody wake up one morning and never heard of our church that so I think I'm going to go to Strong Baptist Church today. Uh, somebody's got to hear about it. Uh, I can probably out preach that baby, but the person next to you can't out of here. I used to do children's church. I can out preach. I preach in jail, but I can out preach anybody. <laughs> John chapter 7. I want to talk to you about something maybe you never heard about. There's some biblical principles. Now, I know the past few weeks, somebody told me the other week, preacher, you full of yourself. You done run up and down the aisles and jumped up and down and waved hankies. I'm going to calm down a little bit today, okay? I'm going to teach you something. And uh, I'm going to try not to get so excited, all right? I'm going to try to be calm. Uh, but in John chapter 7, there's a biblical principle. A principle means something that uh, uh, it's a truth that will always remain the same. Amen. It will never change. And uh, I call it uh, the willingness principle. Uh, you have to be willing to receive what God wants to give. Amen. And that's uh, just uh, uh, the opposite of what's going around in the Southern Baptist Convention today. They teach Calvinism, which means uh, whoever was born to be saved is going to be saved whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. It's not in the Bible. It sounds real good uh, because that way you can look at your kid and say, well, you, uh, are you going to be saved whether you like it or not? And they mm -hmm. won't get saved unless they want to be saved. Yeah, that's they right. Hurt you. And so we want to see the truth. John chapter uh, 7, uh, Jesus is speaking. And of course, everywhere he goes, a crowd gathers. Amen. And I'm going to start verse 11. You're going to read the whole chapter. Uh, then the Jews sought 
took him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He's a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now, uh, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, or education? How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but he that sent me. Amen. Amen. If any man will do his will, whose will? The one that sent him. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh, not, uh, seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him the same is true and no unrighteousness Amen. is in him. I want to talk to you about that biblical principle of human willingness. Human willingness. Uh, we must be willing, okay? Amen. And so we'll talk about that in a few minutes. See what the Bible says. Cord, you have a good day at the nursing home. Yes, sir. Did Michael preach good? Yes, Lord. Amen. I knew he did. Would you pray for our sermon today? Yes, will you bow with me? Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to learn your precious word, Lord. Lord, thank you for coming down and living in the flesh, Lord, and bringing the word to us so we know who the true and living God is, Lord. Lord, let the Spirit be with the pastor as he delivers the bread of life, Lord, so we can take it with us throughout this week and humble ourselves on you, Lord, in your blessed assurance. And we're so thankful and grateful for all that you've done in our life. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 In John 7, 17, he says, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. That first uh, portion of that says, If any man will do his will, you must be willing to be illuminated. Yes, yes Lord. That's right. You must be willing to be illuminated or to be enlightened or to receive the knowledge that God wants to give you. Right. You have free will. Yes, Lord. You can reject it if you want to. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. Most do. Few there be that find it. It's a biblical principle. In other words, a person must be willing to be influenced by the Holy Spirit. Yes. You must be willing to be influenced. So let him influence your mind and your heart. And whatever truth that God has that a man or woman can receive comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so you must be willing to do his will, which says, hear ye him. Yes. Yes, Lord. Faith comes by hearing, hear my word of God. Yes. Uh, repentance is not a change of lifestyle. Though it will change your lifestyle. Yes, Lord. Repentance is a change of mind <clears throat> from going and being rebellious and not wanting to hear what God has to say to you because when the Holy Spirit reveals it in your heart and your mind, you get convicted yes. and it makes you feel bad. Repentance is when you're turning away from that kind of thinking which makes you sin and you turn to Savior and say, Lord, that's what I want. Amen. Yeah. You're, so you're being willing to receive. Amen. Uh, there was a famous Methodist preacher back at the turn of the century. His name was Sam Jones. Sam Jones was a drunkard. He was actually a very intelligent lawyer who became a drunkard. And uh, I forget the name of the little old town he lived in, but he lived in a little town up north. And, and uh, uh, he was always there at the bar, always there at the bar, looking for a handout, but it didn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. And people bought him drinks, and he drank himself into sickness and go in the back alley and throw up and wake up in his own vomit. Well, one day he woke up with his face in his vomit, <clears throat> and he said, what am I doing here? It's kind of like the prodigal son. What am I doing here? Why am I doing this? I don't have to be like this. And he received the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Amen. Savior. 
And he went into the bar and he asked the barkeeper, could he borrow 50 cents? The man said, Sam, you just drank yourself sick. You need to get over it. He said, I don't want to drink. I want to go get a bath down the street. They, they had a place you could get a bath and a shave for 50 cents. So he went down the street and he gave him a bath and a shave. And then he went home to his, his wife. Amen. And she hadn't seen him in months. And he knocked on the door and she opened the door and she didn't recognize him. He, had, he was shaved, he had a haircut, uh, he'd taken a bath, he smelled better, he looked better, he had on some clothes that somebody there at the bath gave him, and she didn't recognize him. And he gave her his testimony about what he did, and she let him in, his life was changed, and he became a Methodist circuit riding preacher. Wow. He would get on a, 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 a mule or a horse and ride through the mountains, and he would preach the gospel in every little town he would go to. Well, he was known to be pretty tough. He was known to be pretty tough. And uh, 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 he would, uh, one time it says that he jumped off his horse to this man that he'd been witnessing to for years, and they just passed in the mountain on the road or the path. And finally he said, you're going to get saved right now. And he jumped off his horse and held him down and said, I'm not going to let you up until you pray and ask the Lord to save you. And the man prayed and asked the Lord to save him because I, I doubt if he meant it. That's the reputation that Sam had. Sam was in a bar one day, and, and uh, no, he went to a little local store after he got saved. He went to this little, and you know how guys used to, some of y'all never had the privilege of knowing the Liars Club that sat around that big yes. pot belly stove <laughs> at the local yeah. store, that wood stove. You know, you go in those stores, a bunch of old men sitting there trying to outlie each other. <laughs> Kind of like a men's breakfast. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so he went in there and this man was going to test Sam's religion. So he went over and cussed him and Sam didn't pay him no attention. And then he slapped him. And, 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 and then all of them just waited to see because they knew what kind of man Sam had been. And they just waited to see what he was going to do. And Sam didn't do anything. He just kept on doing his business. And the man uh, went back over there and slapped him on the other side. And he drew back to slap him again, and Sam grabbed him and beat him up and threw him out into the street. And all the men said, Sam, I thought the Lord said turn the other cheek. He said, I did, but that, after that I took it on myself what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and people would get saved because they were scared of Sam. <laughs> but that ain't salvation, see. <laughs> but you've got to be willing. Because, see, God's going to give you truth, and whatever truth that God sends a person, they must be willing to accept right. that truth, or God being holy, righteous, pure, perfect, just, and righteous, all those things, he can't accept you if you want to walk in untruth, because he's all true. Yes, yes Lord. So you must be willing. Amen. So the first thing I thought about this is, if you're going to be a follower of Christ, and you're going to be saved, you must be guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You must be guided by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Me convicting you will not save you. That's right. I shame people into doing stuff all the time. <laughs> I do. But the Holy Spirit don't do that. He convicts you, see. Yes. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 2, real quick. Most of y'all know these scriptures. But this, hey, hey, this stuff's going around so much nowadays, somebody needs to read the Bible. Right. <clears throat> Amen. Somebody needs to read the Bible. Right. First Corinthians chapter 2, we'll start with verse 10. I'm going to go ahead and start reading. He says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his what? Spirit. Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Yeah. We understand ourselves, we're men. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. You weren't born saved. No. You didn't grow into being saved. God has revealed himself to you by his Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, 
that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen. So the first thing, if you want to have a relationship with the Lord, if you're going to have know God, you've got to be guided by His Spirit. No human teacher can enlighten your mind, turn the light on. No human person can do that. I'm talking about spiritual things. Right. Yeah. I've been listening to teachers before, you know, and never in math, never in math has this happened to me. But I've been listening to teachers in other areas, and I said, oh, wow, now I see it. Never in math. I'm never seeing math. It's, I just soon fight and try to do math. But, but God, the Holy, you'll never read the Bible and by yourself or by any other man or woman teaching you say, oh, now I see it. They may read it to you and teach it to you, but unless the Holy Spirit <coughs> enlightens your mind, yes, you right. still won't understand it. Right. Right. Yes, Lord. I've talked to people before. I said, you go to church Sunday? Oh, yeah. yeah. I said, well, how was it? Oh, yeah. Man, it was good. We sang and we sang. We danced. We had a good time, you know. Yeah. All this stuff. And that and that guitar player and that drummer up there, I thought I was listening to Black Sabbath. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what's the preacher preach on? He said, oh, uh, I don't know, but it was good. You see, the Holy Spirit didn't enlighten you in one stinking thing. Because you're looking to the wrong people to enlighten you in the first place. You need to look to God himself to reveal things to you. And our faith comes by hearing here by the word of God. The word of God is where our faith is. But unless the Holy Spirit opens our understanding, a lot of y'all grew up in church. You didn't get saved till later in life because you didn't understand it. You might have made a profession, got baptized, but you wasn't saved. And then all of a sudden one day somebody was preaching, somebody was teaching you, reading the Bible, and the Holy Spirit said, that's you. You're not even saved. Get saved now. And you got saved that day because the Holy Spirit enlightened you. Yes, he opened your mind. But you were willing. Yes, Lord. See, that's the difference. Yep. You were willing. There's people in churches all over this town today. Ain't like it used to be, but still, there's a lot of people in churches today. And they leave just as blind and lost yes. as when they came in Amen. because they're not willing to to allow God's Spirit to do anything in their heart and their mind. They think they're all right, yeah. and they don't need fixing. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's a dangerous right. place to be. It is yes, it is. I thank God that He interrupted my life. <laughs> yes, and He opened my mind and showed me yes, what I needed. And the results, if I didn't receive it, amen. amen. And then He kept on enlightening me. Now, in Matthew 16, if you'll flip over, I got a little, some little examples here. Matthew 16, verse 16 and 17. I can't run up and down the play my wife. I'm just going to be teaching this, okay? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, Jesus just asked him, Who do men say that I am? And some of them said, Well, Eli they say you're Elijah, risen, come back, and some say you're Jonah, or some uh, some say you're a great prophet, or Moses, you know, or even John the Baptist. He said, yeah, but uh, who who do you say that I am? Yes, Lord. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ. Amen. That means Amen. the Savior. Yes. yes thou art the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Amen. Now you watch these new things on TV, and you're going to get a whole lot less than that. Yeah. And uh, I ain't going to get into that. That's right, preacher. But the reason they teach less than that is because that's what they know. Right. They're not, they've are not. they never been willing to be enlightened themselves. <coughs> Verse 17. Jesus is answering and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon of Yes. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, Amen. which Amen. is Amen. in heaven. Amen. One day... A flood of light comes through the darkness and it opens your eyes. Amen. Look at Matthew 11, Matthew 11, 25 through 27. Matthew 11, 
25. Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hath revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it is it seemed good in thy sight. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. He, hid, he hid it from some people. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will. Reveal. You got the right Bible that says reveal himself. Yes. Reveal himself. Now, uh, in verse 28, and then he gives the invitation to everybody come unto me, all of you that labor here, I'll give you rest. But if you don't know you're labored and heavy laden with sin, you don't know to come looking for the rest. Yes, Lord. Unless he opens your eyes to the need, then you're not willing to change it. Are y'all still with me, did you? Yeah. Turn to Isaiah 29. Maybe you ain't going to make it because i got to preach a whole lot faster than you can turn. <laughs> Isaiah 29, verse 10 says this. 10 through 18. It says, For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes, and your prophets, and your rulers, and the seers hath he covered and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. You see that? Before I say that, when somebody reads the Bible, I say, I don't understand that. Yeah. It was sealed. It's Which men delivered to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. Now, you give out Bibles all day long on every corner in town, but unless they, 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 they read it and God gives them somebody, like in Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch, he's, uh, 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 he, he Philip ran alongside and said, Understands what thou readest? He said, How can I accept some man guide me? He'd done been to church, he'd been to the temple, he was seeking God, he traveled hundreds of miles to get there, was going home disappointed, and was reading Isaiah 53. And God, the Holy Ghost, sends Philip to help him see. He said, How can I? And the Bible says that Philip began right there and preached unto him Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that Ethiopian eunuch, he didn't promise to quit nothing or change nothing. He said, here's water, what hinders me from being baptized? Yes. There's two miracles in that. Number one, they were in the desert. Here's water. Right. <laughs> Number two, Philip was whipped from another town. He was almost spiritually whipped back there, you know. And he said, here's water, what hinders me? Why couldn't I get baptized? And he said, if thou believest, Amen. thou Mass. It says they both went down to the water, so I know neither one of them was a Methodist or a Presbyterian or Lutheran or Episcopalian. They were Baptists. They both went down into the water. And he was baptized and went home rejoicing and started the biggest church in the world in Alexandria, Egypt. What is the result of his salvation? Now, God knew this man wanted to know the unadulterated truth about these spiritual things. Heaven, hell, death, life, salvation, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. He wanted to know. So he began to be a seeker. Mm -hmm. He opened his mind to receive something. Amen. And God said, okay, now, if you've opened it, I'm going to give you something to put in. Praise God. And so he sent somebody yeah. to help him to understand the gospel and be saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all see that? Yeah. Now, I'm talking about the willingness to be illuminated. Yeah. Yeah. The willingness. We pray all we want to. We can claim first, uh, uh, we can claim Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, now shall be saved in our house. But nobody in our house is going to be saved until they are willing yes. to be yeah. saved. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, uh, that verse says we're going home. And when we get home, the gospel is going to be in my house. Amen. But the principle is, those people in that house will be willing to receive the gospel and be saved. That's not a promise just because you got saved. Your kids and your grandkids are going to be saved. God don't have any grandchildren or great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. He just has children. Mm -hmm. They must be born again too. Yeah. 
But since you were willing to receive the light, you let your light shine and you speak about it, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And therefore, they become willing to receive what God wants to give them. But if you go home and talk about how the preacher didn't have his preacher's package or something, or you go home and say, I, I didn't like that special, or, or we sang that song rotten or something, or did you see Sister So-and-so, what she was wearing, or Brother So-and-so? Uh, no. It, hey, if you take that home, they, they, they don't want anything to do with your religion. Right. But if you go home and you say, the Lord met with us today. Yeah. Right. Bunch of saved by grace through faith. Yeah. He met with us Amen. today Amen. and he taught us something. He illuminated my mind. Yeah. He let me see something. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Then after a while, your kids will say, man, I'd like to see some of that. This yeah. world is a mess. Yeah. I ain't seen yeah. nothing but darkness right now. That's right, preacher. And look, uh, you got to have, it's just intellectual honesty. you got to be honest with yourself. God's got some things I need to know. Yes, it does. That's all you got to have. God's got some things I, that I need to know. Amen. You got to admit. And then you got to submit yes. to God. You got to say, okay, God, uh, what do you got for me to know? And then when he tells you what he wants you to know, and then you admit that you're not worthy and you don't deserve that, but I'd like to have some of that. And if you do that, then you commit to it. You say, okay, now, Lord, uh, uh, I wanted to know. You've shown it to me. You've illuminated my mind, my heart in this area, this spiritual area. And now I'm going to do it by the grace of God, by your help. I'm going to do it, God. I'm going to do it and commit. And, and I'm going to do that. And, and I, I, I'm just going to believe this like it's so and like it's finished. I'm just going to believe it. And then once you do that, then you can transmit it. Right. You can give it to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Most Baptists ain't nothing but a big old sack of, of something that God gave them and they never let it out. Mm. <laughs> Have mercy, Lord. And he has to punch a hole in them to get it out of them. Yes. Yeah. Send them to the hospital. Mm. Uh, have some kind of heartbreak in their life. Have something that stirs. He, he has to punch that old bag to get the light out of them. But if I admit I need it, and then I receive what he gives me, and I commit myself to obey him in that the best I can, then I ought to be willing to transmit it to other people and say, let me tell you what the Lord's done for me. Right. Y'all still with me? Yes. Yeah. He ain't mad at me, are you? No. 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 I ain't through yet. Not yet. Bless the Lord. Sometimes... We have to earn, be honest enough. We've got to have an intellectual honesty. We've got to be honest enough to unlearn some things. Yes. Right. Yes, Lord. Yes. You know, when I was a kid, I heard the story, in the, all these stories in the Bible, you know, and I, I heard about the Garden of Eden and a snake. <laughs> and Eve eating an apple. And as a kid, you know, I wondered, why is apple so bad? I love that. I used to steal them every year from the neighbor up across the street. We stole her apples. They were pretty good. I don't know why. And what's so bad about a snake? We play in the woods all the time. Snakes don't bother us. But see, I didn't know the truth. I didn't know the whole truth. So I had to unlearn that stupid stuff. Come on, preacher. Somebody said, well, I know I'm going to heaven. I got baptized. I had to unlearn that. Baptism don't take you to heaven. That's right. I had to yeah. unlearn that. Get rid of that. Baptism's right. Baptism's true. If you do it for the right reason, the right way, at the right time, it's good, but it still don't go take you to heaven. You need to. Uh, I used to believe the Bible was mag magic. Now, it is supernatural. Amen. Right. It's a supernatural book. God wrote it. Amen. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It's profitable. Every doctrine, reproof, all these things. It, it's profitable. It's a super powerful book. I've read it and preached out of it. I've seen big old men in jail break down and cry like little babies. And the Army Reserve get saved, break and cry like little babies. And, and in churches, some people ought to be in jail. Break down and cry like little babies. God's word is powerful. It's sharp and it's two edged sword. But it's not magic. Magic is satanic. Magic yes. is, is false. Magic 
It is pretending something to be that it's not. Right. Yes. Uh, people used to say there's some verses in the Bible that if you get burnt, you can read these verses right. and the burn will go away. <laughs> I forgot where it was at now, Isaiah or somewhere. I read it had absolutely nothing to do with getting burnt. Mm. And it didn't work either. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you got to be honest in your mind. Amen. You got to be intellectually honest. Uh, uh, somebody else said there's some there's a verse you can pray in the Bible and rub off warts. <laughs> I had warts when I was a kid, all in between those fingers. Did y'all get them old seed warts? And of course, as a kid, and, and you know, second, third grade, there ain't nothing to make you happier than to sit there and pull them little seeds out of those ugly warts and make more warts, you know. <laughs> you didn't know. And somebody said, if you pray over it, you know, so I'd rub them and pray. And did you know my warts never went away until they wanted to? <laughs> There's some things you got to be intellectual. You got to say, I've been taught wrong. I believe wrong. I've got to be honest about this thing. I'm not going to heaven just because mom and dad was going to heaven. Right. By the way, if you tell your kids that, you're awful. Yeah. Tell them you're going to heaven just because yeah, you are. That's right. That's all. Come on, uh, uh, you have to uh, not believe some things you were taught. If you're going to receive what God wants you to have, if you're going to be uh, enlightened in the things of God, if you're going to be saved, if you're going to live a Christian life, if you're going to walk in the Spirit, if you're going to uh, uh, live that abundant life, you've got to just quit believing some of this junk people tell you, right. even religious people, or on TV preachers, yes. on the radio, or internet's worse than that. Now, every little yes. jack leg that decides he's a preacher mm-hmm. jumps up and starts him a podcast and has a million followers. Mm-hmm. We'll have 15 on that one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You just got to be honest. Sometimes you got to unbelieve. Like that fellow in Chester Jail I was preaching, I told him smoking won't send you to hell. It'll just make you smell like you already been there. Right. And he jumped up in front of everybody and screamed and hollered at me that I was a liar and a false teacher because his grandma taught him if you smoke cigarettes, you're going to die and go to hell. I said, I'm sure your grandma was a wonderful woman. She might have even been a Christian. But smoking cigarettes ain't got nothing to do with going to heaven or hell other than it may shorten your lifespan and you'll get there before the rest of them. That's right. You just got to unbelieve sometimes. You got to be honest. Search the scriptures, Jesus said. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. What does the Bible say? Yes. Amen. What does the Bible say in context of that scripture? What does it say? You can't just pick out a scripture and, and base all your uh, belief and all your doctrine on that one scripture. Amen. And people do it like Baptists do it. Lazy Baptists who don't want to raise their children right, they claim Acts 16, 31, that their children's going to grow up and go to heaven simply because they said a sinner's prayer and they got baptized. Their children have to. No, they don't have to. You know what we got to do? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I know this is a little different. Every one part of me a little different. Most everybody in here claims to be saved. If you're not saved, I want to encourage you to be saved today. Amen. And the only thing that would hinder you from being saved is being intellectually dishonest of your need right. to be saved. Yeah. Oh, I got religion. You don't need religion. You need salvation. Amen. Amen. First Timothy <clears throat> chapter 4, if you will, verse 7, it says, but refuse profane and old wives' tale fables. Exercise thyself rather unto godliness. We need to replace that rebellious heart, which can't illuminate anything. That rebellious heart is going to keep you in the dark. It'll keep you on your way to hell. It'll keep you as an unsatisfied Christian uh, but we need to replace that. And that ought to happen when you got saved. Yes, Lord. I mean, 
every area of faith and practice, the day that we admitted we needed help and we asked him to enlighten us sort of, and I know you didn't use these words, but we asked him, Lord, help me. That's all you got, Lord, help me. And we asked him to help us, then we submitted to his help and, and received him as our Savior, and then we committed ourselves to him as our Lord. And then we tried to transmit it. Well, the only way that's going to happen is you're going to have to realize that everybody ain't right. And unless it's the Bible, I don't want to hear it. Amen. And if it is the Bible, I want it in context. I want you to read the whole chapter or two or three chapters and explain this thing to me. Don't be a Mormon that comes to my house and reads me uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29. and says, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? And say, we need to baptize you in your great grandma's name so she can get out of the third heaven, first heaven, and go up to the third heaven. You're not going to convince me of that. You might read me a whole lot more scripture and go back and read the whole chapter, and it's talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you believe on him, then you'll say, and you'll have part of the resurrection also. If you don't, if you believe he's still dead, then what shall you do who's baptized in the name of a dead man, Jesus Christ, if he's not resurrected from the dead? Right. So you got to be open. But boy, they, those cults will come to the door and they'll read these scriptures out of context and then they'll tell you things that they don't, uh, they didn't come up with this stuff. Some cult leader has written it down and they've had to memorize it. They don't read the Bible. Uh, they don't study the scriptures because they're not willing uh, they would rather somebody do it for them. And by the way, Baptist church is getting a whole lot like that. You'd rather get somebody else to study it for you. Yeah. Where God could enlighten you. And then uh, let them shine their light on you. Amen. And you'll get secondhand light. <laughs> and sometimes you'll say, well, that's just their opinion. But if you let God reveal things to you through his word, then you'll say, that's God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let God be true and true. every man alive. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So you got to let him, Jesus called them stiff-necked people. <laughs> yeah. If you ever had a kid, you know what that means. <laughs> You're going to do this or not. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Help us, Lord. And that's where the rod of reproof comes in. Amen. 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 I thought I'd get me a bunch of poster boards one day and wire it to Walmart that says, uh, if you don't want to whip your children, I'll do it for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never seen those kids at Walmart? I saw two come to Walmart one time. You remember when those shoes were in style that had the little wheel there on the heel and they lean back on the wheels and skate one man two of them come by me like buttered light and you know they're just fl flying all over walmart and things putting knocking old people down i thought i'd like to whip your little butt with one of them shoes Bless them, Lord. that's in the original language you can't find that in the bible <laughs> but listen We'll to forget human authority in all matters of faith and practice and go to the final authority. Yes, amen. Amen. The Word of God. Yes. Yes. Amen. And the Baptists have all been called, always been called the people of the book. We got amen. one book, that's it. Thank you, Mike. You know, in our adult Sunday school class, we don't even use quarterlies anymore. Amen. You know why? It's a waste of time. Yeah. It's a waste of time. Come I'd on. rather just take the Bible and study it verse by verse, yeah. wouldn't you? Yes, Lord. I don't need anybody to explain it to me. I need the Holy Ghost to explain it to yeah. me. Right. It's good. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I got to hurry up. Some of y'all uh, belly is growling. I can smell it. <laughs> but, hey, look. Now, it doesn't do you any good if you hear it. Yeah. Oh, right. How many sinners ever said this? You're talking to them. You say, uh, you, uh, don't you believe the Bible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe every word in that book. Of course, they ain't never read a word in that book. <laughs> well, I believe every word in that book. That's the Bible. You don't talk bad about the Bible. And if your house burns down, it won't burn up. 
And I know the words that you can read over and get rid of the burn out of a burnt place and get rid of warts. <laughs> but unless you are willing to receive what's in the Bible, it's not going to help you at all if you believe the Bible's in there and in found in there the Word of God and it's what we use for all matters of faith and practice. It's not going to help you if you don't receive what He wants to give you out of the Bible. Amen. And we said in Sunday school, their foolish heart was dark yeah. and their mind was darkened because they refused to believe the truth. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, preacher, that sounds big, it is. You might could call it that. But that sounds prejudiced. Well, in some areas, that was, it's not color or race, but it is prejudice. It's son of God or no God. It is, right. Well, that kind of sounds fanatical. It is. I got a book full of people who died believing all this. Mm -hmm. yep. And most Baptists can't hardly make it to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's right. That just sounds mean. No, so I'm, not, I'm just telling you. Amen. When I go to the doctor, I don't want the doctor to look at me and lie to me and say, oh boy, you're, you're a picture of perfect health. <laughs> Come on, preacher. And I had to drag myself out of bed this morning. Uh -huh. And I groaned while I was doing it. And it wasn't groan want me clothed with another body. It groaned not want to get out of the bed Amen. in the first place. I want that doctor to look at me and say, yeah, and I'm going pretty soon, and I tell you what you're going to say, son, you're going to have to uh, get back to walking, and, and you're going to have to kind of adjust your diet a little bit, or are you going to get diabetes? He's going to tell me that. Yes, Lord. He told some of y'all that. Yeah. You know why it didn't happen? You, it, it was truth. You knew it was truth. But you never received it. That's it. Right. Right. And acted on it. Right. <clears throat> and I'd rather, him, look, <clears throat> if I'm going to have kidney failure or anything that was uh, life threatening to me, I'd rather that, that doctor look right at me and point his finger at me and say, let me tell you the problem. Yeah. It's you. That's you yeah. are the yeah. problem. Yeah. And you're going to kill yourself if you don't listen yeah. to me. Yeah. Would you like to have a doctor like that? No, most of you wouldn't. <laughs> but I would. Yeah. Jesus said, I'll show you the truth. The truth sets free. Yeah. I want to be free. Amen. I don't want to hobble through life physically. <coughs> and I don't want to hobble through life spiritually. I want to be enlightened. Yeah. I want to know the truth. Yeah. I want to see the truth. I want to be able to react to the truth yeah. and obey the truth and spread the truth. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit just for a second. There'll be no complete Bible understanding without obedience to what the Holy Spirit has already revealed to you. Right. Amen. Amen. You're not going any farther. And he's revealed to all of us that were sinners. Mm -hmm. yes, that's Amen. Right. Thank you, Lord. So you're not going to go any farther in Bible understanding or spiritual understanding or spiritual life until... You listen to your first illumination. See, when he says if we're walking in the light as he's in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. He doesn't mean, well, he can say stepping in the light. But we're walking in that light, and he gives me more light. It's like going from room to room. He's turning the light on. I'm going to another room, he's turning the right light on. I'm going to another room, he's turning the light on. You know when I get hurt when the light ain't on. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I got a little broke coat to tell you that. <laughs> Some of y'all got them too. Yeah. <laughs> Turn to Deuteronomy nine three. I'm about through. Deuteronomy nine three. I'm about through. I'm just trying to help you. You do whatever you want to with this, okay? This is when you and the Lord. It's my job to give it to you. It's your job to receive it. Amen. It's his job to enlighten you to show you it's the truth. Well, he does that by the scriptures. That's why I try to fill my sermons with scriptures. I'm sorry I can't be one of these fancy uh, worldly preachers y'all like so much that reads a half of scripture and then preaches 45 minutes on uh, powerful living or how to get rich and fat and lazy, you know. 
Uh, Deuteronomy 9, 23. Deuteronomy 9, 23. Get the picture of the children of Israel. They've gone through the wilderness. God has delivered them. God has revealed himself to them over and over and over and over. Uh, God has spoken to them over and over through my lips. He's spoken to them over and over and over. Now, uh, uh, they have went on a 40-year a, a detour because they didn't listen to him the first time. That's right, preacher. Yeah. And we get on detours yes. so we don't listen to him. I've been on detours. Yes. Because on, and I don't like detours. So now they come to a place called Kadesh Barnea. It's still there. By the way, I heard the, if you watch the war in Israel thing on the news, the other day they said, at Kadesh. At Kadesh. They were fighting at Kadesh. Now here's a little mountain range at Kadesh Barnea. There's no real what we would call mountain, but to them they call it a little mountain range. And they've come there. And uh, uh, God said, go in and take it. It's yours. This is yours. The houses are yours. The gardens are yours. Everything in there is yours. It's already built. I'm going to run them out. Just go in. But of course, it was a Baptist church. And they went to Moses and said, Moses, we need to vote on these. <laughs> said, we don't need to vote on nothing. We just need to do what he tells us to do. No, we need to vote on this. We need to get a committee together. A Baptist committee is what created a giraffe, and they thought they were creating a horse. <laughs> Come on, Brick. We didn't get a committee together. So they sent out, how many spies, Sunday school class, how many spies did they send out? What? What? How many spies did they send out? Twelve. 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 Don't need to come to Sunday <laughs> They sent out 12 spies. We'll go spy out the land. They came back, and they came back carrying this. Uh, the grapes were so big, two men had to carry them on a stick. They were so big, so heavy. And they brought back up honey and all kind of stuff, you know. And they said, man, it's good over there. There's milk and there's honey. It's flowing with milk and honey. It's a wonderful place. But we got a problem. Mm, come on, preacher. We need to vote on it. Well, what's the problem? The problem is there are giants over there, the sons of Anakim and, and, and their relatives of uh, uh, the Goliath, you know. Right. And they got six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, kind of like some of you. And uh, uh, they're big, uh, they're 10 feet tall, and uh, uh, we can't fight them. Uh, uh, so what are we going to do? And two of them said, uh, we will go. Amen. Yeah. We just sort of go. Yeah, that's right. Oh, we can't fight those people. Uh, we're not, not going to have to fight. God didn't say fight. That's right. He said go. And we need to go. Yeah. No, we're not going to do that. And they discouraged themselves that's right. from the enlightenment that God gave them. Yeah. They already, yeah. he, he'd already told the shores. Yeah. There won't even be anybody there when you get there. That's right. And of course, like all Baptist churches, Right here's a good place for that old chandelier story. <laughs> Y'all heard the chandelier story? Yeah. You ain't heard that. Like you know, I'm not like I ain't going to tell it. Anymore. <laughs> anyway, that guy said that we ain't got nobody in here who knows how to play it. So, <laughs> so there you go. There you go. Now, I'm gonna, and that's why they wandered around 40 years. That was their big tool. Now, I'm going to tell you something. God will show us stuff. We can see it. But he, He's not going to give us complete understanding until we obey it. Yes, right. Lord, that's right. If we obey what He's already given us, then He'll give us more. Amen. Yeah. If we don't obey what He gave us, listen, if you don't obey salvation, it don't matter if you get baptized and you wrinkle like a prune, you ain't going to heaven. That's right. You got to receive that first salvation. Amen. And then, if you get saved and you never get baptized, well, that's fine. You're going to heaven, but nobody knows it because you think you're a secret Christian, and in the Bible, there are no secret Christians. So right. now that's going to turn out. But if you obey, if you walk in the light that He gave you today, He'll give you more light. Amen. You ever looked at somebody and said, I wish I could be a Christian like that? Mm -hmm. Amen. They didn't get that way just. 
the moment they were saved, God revealed it. And they obeyed it. And God revealed it. And they obeyed it. And God revealed it. And they obeyed it. He illuminated us. Amen. I'm going to quit. I know that Kentucky Fried Chicken has your name on the plate over there right now. I'm going to have a good book. I think, but that's all right too. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15 says this. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, hearken not your harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. That's what I just read you. Right. That's what I just read you. He, they provoke God. Amen. Yes, Lord. And God let them wander around until that whole crowd was died off. And then their children received it. Did you know, listen to this, did you know that all Christians have the same experiences right. as they had right there? Mm-hmm. All Christians have yeah. these experiences. You ain't no different than we are. <coughs> all Christians. God reveals something, we receive it or not. If we do, there's blessings involved. If we're not, there's chastisement involved. Yes. That's right. We got saved the same way you did. We didn't get saved because we got better. We got saved looking under Jesus and altar and finish of our faith up on the joy that was set before me, doing the cross, despite the shame. And now sit down and right hand of God. That's how we got saved. That's how everybody gets saved. We're no different from you. Thank you, Lord. There are no good Christians and better Christians and best Christians. We're just Christians. Yes, Lord. And it depends on how much you will let him illuminate your mind and show you things. Mm-hmm. How your life's going to be as a Christian. Amen. He wants you to have the best life. Amen. But if you won't receive it, you're like there at the Kadesh Barnea and you said, no, I ain't going to do that. That's scary. Well, yeah. you won't get it. Yeah, that's right, That's good. No, I can't do it. I can't live it. What you said, you know, I won't get it. Anybody, he never asked you to live anything. He just asked you to live. Yes, Lord. Amen. So if you're not saved today, let me encourage you. Open up your mind, your heart, and say, Lord, yes. right. Amen. That's yes. what I need. Yes. You showed it to me today. That's what I need. If you are saved, Lord spoke to you about something else in your Christian life. You say, Lord, now you done showed it to me. Now that's what I need. Give me the strength to do it. Yeah. And then after you receive it, go out there and tell somebody, uh, uh, maybe today at lunch, you know, or something, sit down and say, you know what I did today? The Lord showed me something. Amen. And I told him, that's what I want. Yes. And by the grace of God, I'm going to do it. Amen. 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 Let's stand. Father, thank you for being there at work. I don't know how to call. But whether I did or not, they're not going to understand it unless the Holy Spirit enlightens them. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that if there's one in here tonight, today, that's not saved, that you don't let them eat or sleep or work or play or do anything without thinking about you and without revealing yourself to them, Lord. Lord, stay on them. Keep shining the light until they either receive it or they reject it once and for all. Then, Lord, for us Christians, uh, uh, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him is a sin. And Lord, you've shown us so many things and we've not done them. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. Help us to walk in the light as you're in the light. And to be obedient. And keep enlightening us, Lord. We need more. We need to know more. We need more light. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's sing. In the tent, pass me on, old gentle Savior. Altar's open if you need it. I'll pray with you. My wife will pray with you. We'll get somebody to pray with you. Come on. Oh, no gentle Savior. Dear 